All right, so what's going on, everybody? Deadly Raven here, and today I'm going to be showing you my Winter Todd guide and how to effectively do Winter Todd. So the way we're going to do the first route is obviously you guys can use the Games Necklace, which you can wield in your Necklace slot, and you teleport there in the, which is one of the options there. The other option I'm going to show you is actually heading there by foot through the docks. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to get to Port Sarum, which is down here, and then you're going to go to the very far southeastern dock, and then you're going to head here by talking to Vios. He's going to right click travel and he's going to take you take me to Great Corrent. I, I recommend wearing full graceful doing this because you'll be able to run a lot quicker and you'll last a lot longer. So once we get on the once we get on the docks, you're going to click up north on the map and you're going to head west. I'm going to play this in real time so you guys can actually see the entire route I followed because some people said they don't want me to fast forward guide. So this is a full quick way to get there. So we're going to run straight. Ross and Ben walk by them. Since the new Zaya update, there has been a bit of a change in the route, and I'll show you guys that. We're gonna cross the bridge here, and then we're gonna head up through the Arceus, and then go northwest in through here. We'll keep heading across here. And there's gonna be an opening in the, slot, in the rocks next to this flag, and we're gonna head up this way. These things will not attack us. So if whoever's scared of the bats, they're not going to kill you. You're good. Head up here. Go west. Always keep your mini-map pointing northwards. That way it's a lot easier to follow along on the guide. A lot of people try to spin the maps around, and that complicates everybody's directions. There's two magic trees here. Well, I didn't know that. Cool. Four magic trees. Yeah, I really like what they do with the new update. Let's just zoom out a little bit further. Perfect. So the route basically is you go north, west, and then northwest. Then we're going to run along this building here. Keep heading north around the outskirts. This used to be the same route as prior to the update, but they just changed a bit of, uh, like there was a bridge that you have to cross now and go a little bit further up north. That's all. Nothing crazy. Winter Todd has also gotten a bit of an update now up here, so it's a bit of, it's more of its own area. Looks really nice. These bats are on aggressive, so if you're level 3, they're not going to kill you. Now, at the moment, I'm sitting at 32 HP because I did not go for the Winter, Tod Winter Todd route first on this account. But I do have another main account that has 99 fire making. So th I decided to just train this account a little bit differently to get a bit more content. But this will still apply. And I thought it would be more interesting to show you guys at a bit higher hit points how much damage you actually get dealt from the snow. And so that way you, you don't only have to do this at 10 HP and get discouraged if you get higher up health points. We're almost here. And then once you get in the spiraling path, you're going to just follow it along here. Head east. Then we're going to head north. The reason why this is playing in real time is so you can have the guide playing right next to your uh, mini game. Uh, right next to your game. So you don't have to worry about pausing and replaying and zooming in. You can just focus on the route and just play along. That guy looks really cool. I really like that shield. All right, so here we are now. We're gonna bank the chest. And we're gonna get rid of all of our uh, full graceful first because we don't need that. We need warm armor for our time in there. So what that means is I've already gotten the clue hunter pieces and I'll be linking a guide below that I've created on what you should do before you head to Winter Todd. So you can just follow along with that, guys. Get all the Clue Hunter pieces. I mean, I don't have the chest piece, which I can also get, but I got the Pyromancer chest piece really quickly, so I decided to use that instead. Also have a Bruma Torch here and Warm Gloves, but the Clue Hunter Gloves have the same purpose. I'm going to take out a Tinderbox to light the Brazier. A hammer to repair the brazier and a steel wood cutting axe which we have to cut down the trees the bruma logs now the thing is you uh, the, there is no difference between a dragon wood cutting axe and a steel wood cutting axe so i would just recommend buying this from bob's axe shop in lumbridge for 200 coins and then heading to winnetot whenever you're ready now as terms as far as food supply is concerned you do want to bring something that heals a decent amount and uh, because the damage dealt at winnetot is percentage based so for somebody who is 10 HP, you're fine getting away with cakes. 
But if you're slightly higher hit points like I am, you would want to use maybe jugs of wine or maybe some fish like trout or salmon. And the good thing about this mini game, guys, is you will get raw tramon, uh, raw tramon. <laughs> You'll get raw salmon, raw tuna, raw trout, and you can cook that as you go along because the rewards here scale with your level. So if you come back here at a higher level, which is what I plan on doing, you'll get stuff like U logs and magic logs at a way higher density as opposed to getting things like maple logs and willows. The mahogany and teak logs are very good because of the construction XP, but besides that, it might be better to revisit this thing at a higher level for better supplies. But if you want experience, head here at level 10. So now I'm just going to hop worlds to world 309, and I hope it doesn't lag, and I'll show you guys a quick game of Wintertide and what it's going to look like. Everybody, okay, so it's got, the game is going to start in 20... Oh, there's a kid named Ravenfen. Interesting. And RJ as well. Perfect. So one thing you want to do as well, this is a pro tip that I'll give you guys, is go into your sound menu and really crank up your sound effects. This is going to tell you when you're repairing the lighters. All right, one sec. So first thing you want to do is go light that brazier. We, we missed it because we're late and we're, we suck. We got hit for a nice five damage. Start cutting these trees. So you guys saw me get hit for a five and for a two and another two right now. If you were level 10 HP, you would get hit for one and two. So we're going to stay here and cut an entire full inventory of this. Fine. That's okay. 19 hit points, not bad at all. Now, if you were 10 HP, you would be using, you would have to be dealt three damage and you would have used one cake, one bite of cake. Whereas coming back at higher levels, if I still choose to use cake, I'll go through a much bigger supply. Here we are. As you guys can see, it's fairly self. Now there we, we can tell we got hit for damage, so that tells us now we got to re-click on the brazier. Now, once you burn your entire inventory, you run here again, and we're sitting at 170 points. If you guys can tell, we want to be at 500 by the time of the game ends. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to be as efficient as we can, and every time we get hit here, we're just going to make sure we heal up on health, and then we head over to the brazier again and start burning all our logs. Whenever we get damage dealt to us by the brazier, we got to make sure we click on it again to start lighting the fire as well. Because if you get dealt damage while you're burning logs, it stops the entire action from happening. So you have to restart it. There you go. Got their second full inventory. We're going to light this up. Do. As you can see, I'm getting 220 XP per log, which is really good. And uh, yeah, we should be able to make it in points this round. So we're at 375 points, so we need to burn about 12 to 13 more logs and maybe relight another brazier if we get the chance. Got our third inventory of logs. Now we're going to head over here, eat up one more bite of cake, and then start burning these. As you guys can tell, it's very straightforward. There isn't that much risk or damage to take place. You just want to keep clicking on the logs and burning. Now this guide that I'm creating is to get the absolute fastest fire making experience in the game. If you do want to decide to get more, so see how the brazier broke? We want to spam click on it to repair it. We'll get a lot of construction XP as well. Oh, we've got a construction level. Then we want to light it up. So whenever you light it, you get 430 XP, which scales on your level, which is absolutely fantastic. And whenever the brazier goes out again, you want to click on it, heal up again. Let's eat it, let's eat it up a bit. I don't like my HP level right now. 
So yes, at 30 HP, guys, Winter Thought is still doable with cakes. No problem at all. Always try to repair the Brazier when it breaks down or when it runs out of fire because that will give you 25 points per activity and as opposed to 10 XP that you get per log that you burn. There you go. Now when you see the timer go down to 8% or so, you want to make sure you have an even amount of logs corresponding to the timer. So if it's a 10% and you have 12 logs, chances are you're not going to burn all of them. So right now we're at 4%. I have 5 logs left. I should be able to make it. There you go, come on, one more log. And we missed it by one. All right, so we'll, now what a lot of people do is once you run out of food, you have 40 seconds to run to the bank, go deposit everything, and then run back out. As you guys notice with this outfit that I'm wearing, I barely got hit a lot. And we're just gonna go out here. Click over here in the corner. And I'm gonna open this. Let's hope for a Phoenix pet or a dragon woodcutting ax. Yeah, never mind. So we got some pure essence and some hairlander seeds. My kill count on Winter Thought is 52. It will take you about 400 to 500 crates, depending if you decide to fledge your logs or not, and how much XP you get and points per round to get to 99 fire making. I strongly recommend you do that if you're a starter out account, but otherwise you can just come back here at higher levels, which is what I plan on doing, as opposed to at lower levels, because when you're very low level, you will get things like Guam seeds and uh, Marental seeds, but as you come up back at higher levels, you can get rainars as well as toe flag seeds and much better logs. I'm I am gonna come back here to get 12 magic logs for the desert treasure quest. So until then, guys, I'll catch you in the next video that I'm making, and peace out for now.